that too. Right, give me a one. I'd like to welcome you back. I'm thinking. Mr. Cosby, going okay? You good? Yeah. Okay. I'd like to welcome you back to our regular scheduled, regular scheduled council meetings for June 7, 2021 at 7 p.m. It's nice to be back in person and see everyone in live flesh for once. And no, I can, you can see everybody's face and not just partial, so that's, that's always nice. So, uh, with that being said, Ms. Parker, would you come along, please? Mayor Lowry. Here. Councilman Grimm. Here. Councilwoman Eggleston. Here. Councilwoman Nowakowski. Here. Councilman Cobb. Here. Councilman Rodewald. Here. Vice Mayor Cook. Here. Seven members present. Thank you very much. And tonight's invocation will be done by Councilman Cobb. Get on the stand, please. Dear Heavenly Father, give us the guidance on what's best to do with our citizens. Also watch over our first responders, our EMS and our firefighters. Also watch over our law enforcement, our deputies. Watch over our military. And watch over the, everybody in the community. Today. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So funny. All right. Moving on, we need action on the uh, work session minutes for 5-17-21. So moved. Second. Uh, motion by Mr. Vice Mayor, second by Mr. Council, any discussion on these minutes? When you're ready, please. All right, Councilman Okowski? Yes. Councilman Cobb? Yes. Councilman Rodewald? Yes. Vice Mayor Cook? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. Councilman Eggleston? Yes. Minutes accepted 7 0. Thank you. And then we'll need a motion for the uh, regular scheduled council meeting on May 17, 2017. So move. Second. Uh, I think we'll go with Mr. Vice Mayor again and second on this end. Okay. Any discussion, Councilman? Councilman Okowski? Yes. Councilman Cobb? Sustained, I was not here. Councilman Rodewald? Yes. Vice Mayor Cook? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. Councilman Eggleston? Yes. Those minutes are accepted 601. Thank you very much. And moving on, communications tonight. Uh, we had a few uh, things that we went over under the work session. Uh, one of the bigger topics was uh, the, uh, the CARES. Uh, funding, C CDBG funds, and, and how the city uh, would like to use it if, if it's something that we get. Uh, we can use it towards uh, I'll just go to some of you that aren't here. Uh, looks like in the neighborhood, possibly an area of maybe $400,000, but it's got to be used for parks or things of that nature to expand, you know, to give more room for people, um, you know, shelter house, skate park, any existing parks, pool, whatever, not actual pool, but buildings at the pool for parks. Uh, things of that nature. So we didn't really go over what council as a whole uh, wanted to uh, direct that to if we were to get it. So I don't know if council wants to go over that some more now or set a date here. But, uh, Mr. Bates kind of needs an answer sooner than later. Um, what, what would you guys like to do? So we can talk it over a little bit more if you'd like. If... I think we need to do it another day where we can get some numbers that we can work with. But the soonest we can do a meeting because you're saying the newspaper's falling so far behind and getting our ads out. Well, it, they, we have to have a 48 hour window. So if I placed it tomorrow, the earliest it would go in is Thursday. Right. So Thursday would be the soonest. Yeah, but then you have to give it 24 Friday hours. Friday would be the soonest that yeah. you could have a meeting. Once the legal ad hit, you have to wait 24 hours. Your opinion is up to you far. Um, if it's okay with council, what I was going to suggest is in the city manager report, I have work sessions requested past the 21st. Um, so what we can do is we can have one on Monday to talk about this particular funding opportunity. If we have some more information about the American Rescue Plan, I don't want to confuse people because we don't have the information yet that we need, uh, the detailed information, we may be able to just start those talks early as well. Okay. So my question to council, do you want to do Monday just dedicated to this one? and then do the American Rescue Plan after the 21st, it's probably the best. That way you don't confuse the two. Yeah. 
That's fine with me. So you think we could get that one in on Monday? Is that what you were, if I understood you right? Is that okay with council? It's coming Monday? What time? You need a motion? What time are you going to do it at? I mean, how, I mean, you know, we can do it during the day. I mean, what, what time is good for you? I, I can make it work any time, I mean, much. So can I, and just. I mean, preferably in the afternoon for me. Yeah, say 2.30? Three. I'm done with that. Thank you. That'd be awesome. Two or three o'clock at the council on Monday. Here. Because it'll probably take no more than an hour, and that way people can get out here by four, four thirty, and get there. So it's like two. Is that what you, Mr. Rice, do on Monday? Mm -hmm. Mr. Cobb, you mean Dr. Fourteen. I have no problem. Mr. Cobb, you mean Dr. Hey, my ride. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> three would be better. If we could do three. 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 Okay, so three. three o'clock on Monday. So I need a motion for that meeting. So moved. Second. The 14th, three o'clock at the Shelter House. So the, the 14th, three o'clock, Shelter House. For the purpose of discussing the CDBG CARES Act projects. Okay. Yes. And a motion by, I think, Vice Mayor and second by Mr. Cobb. Yep. I heard right. I heard Cook. I, I thought I heard. He, he made a motion, I second it. Okay. All right. Are you ready? All right. Uh, Councilman Rogold. Yes. Vice Mayor Cook. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Councilman Grimm. Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston. Yes. Councilwoman Nowakowski. Yes. Councilman Cobb. Yes. That's the 7 0. Thank you very much. All right. And do we need to go over any other uh, communication items that we were under in the uh, work session? Do you want to uh, check some type of a situation on this citizen of the year? Yeah, I think we do it under since that's not actually the list. Oh, so, uh, well, yeah, I guess it's partially in here. Do you want, you want to do it now or under other It's up to you. Oh, you got it. It doesn't make any difference to me. You okay with other business to do that? Okay. Other business and do that. All right. So moving on. City Manager's report, Mr. Bridge. Good evening. And I'll hand it to you, sir. Give me two seconds. I'm sorry. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of council, members of the public. Good to see everyone in person again. Um, so we'd like to share with you the city manager report. I did keep it kind of uh, light this week, so we had a lot of discussion and some big legislation pieces. Um, but in, under informational items, we have mayor's court. We have legislation in front of council tonight. Um, so I will email council the next steps after I, con con after I have a consultation with our law director. Um, I know that one legislation piece we have tonight is actually it's going to take the place of like three ones. We just combined it into one. So I want to just touch back with Jake real quick before I give final the guidance to council. Uh, American Rescue Plan. Uh, I would like to know the availability of council members after June 21st for special meetings to discuss the expenditures. And for those in the audience who may not be aware of it, we are getting just over a million dollars um, from the American Rescue Plan uh, that we'll be able to use uh, in the city. Um, we're still waiting on detailed guidelines. We have very vague guidelines. Um, but one of the things we're looking at doing is um, taking out, uh, not taking out loans for our wastewater plant so we can do some repairs there. Council will ultimately have the uh, final say on that. But we do need to get together and start thinking about that. So after June 21st, that is the next meeting. Um, we can probably start having meetings on my calendar. Let me get my calendar up here. So if we do anything the same week of the 21st, I would just ask that it's not on Wednesday the 23rd. Uh, and then the 24th. Oh, we have, a, we have our webinar scheduled that day on the 24th for that particular fund, so it'd be good. So if we do it the week of the 21st, just not on the 23rd. Anytime is good for me. Would it be advisable for us to see the webinar before we have the discussion? No, we can bring all the information to you. Um, I mean, you guys can, I don't know. If, I mean, if you want to watch it, we can probably send you the link. I don't have a link for it yet. Okay. Mm -hmm. The 24th is the only day I'll be available that week. What about if we just did it on the following Monday? That way we have, just keep it clean on Mondays. 28th? 28th, is that what it is? Let me get, like, oh, Yeah, the 28th is the following Monday. Yeah, that's fine. 
Well, you can start with that one and see if we need another one after that. We'll probably need a few more, to be honest with you. But we can at least start there. And that's up for council. So. Whatever is convenient for everyone. I'm good. Afternoons or evenings. If you want to try and do an afternoon to simplify it for <coughs> sitting man, you're fine with me. Okay, be a, a later afternoon meeting. Right. Yeah, later afternoon. I've, I've got a student until 3. Just what are you thinking, 4 or 5? Four would be fine. Four is fine. Four good. Four. Four o'clock on the 28th. Mr. Grimm, does that work for you? Four on the 28th. Okay. okay. <laughs> so the the you service for the American Rescue Plan? Yeah, it's so just the expenditures of the okay. American Rescue Plan. We got a motion for Mr. Grimm for said meeting. Second. Second by Mr. Roeville. He was the first on that, I'm sorry. Mr. Grimm. Uh, Vice Mayor Cook. Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. Councilman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Okowski? Yes. Councilman Cobb? Yes, and I may not be there. Okay. Councilman Roadwald? Yes. That motion passes 7-0. Thank you very much. Well, thank you, Council. We got a lot of cool things going on in the city right now. We can't wait to tell everyone about, but we'll get there. All right, so uh, the next bullet point on here is selling of city land. I think a couple of meetings ago, I came to the council, um, and a gentleman had wanted to purchase an entire parcel. Um, our planning director gave an opinion on it that we would want to keep that. Um, that was the whole entire parcel. But he did email me back, and he's interested in talking with council about selling the uh, off the parcel of that par parcel of land, portion of the parcel of land, that actually doesn't extend past the creek. So anything past the creek it would still be there. Um, so I attached him, uh, I think his email in here with that, and I also, you know, this one right here. Make sure I got the terms of it down. He's willing to pay all legal fees, surveying, and pay $10,000 for the land. So ultimately that would be council's, uh, if council would like me to move forward with looking into it, I would need a motion on behalf of all the council. Because um, that's that's a step oriented process as far as getting things in order for that seller. You need a motion to deny it, or can it also just die for lack? However, you guys want to do that. It can go either way. That's mm -hmm. what I'm assuming. So, the council would want to make a motion either way or to let it die. Maybe go ahead. Is council interested in doing it or, or no? I think your answer is right there. I think they're letting it die for lack of motion. Because right I know we discussed it a little bit. Mm -hmm. So, Councilor, anything you want to say on? I spoke to him a few weeks back, and he said he was interested in leasing. No, this is this is a different person. Scott Griffith. Scott Griffith's lease is on for introduction tonight. This is a completely different house, completely different okay. person. Yes. Yeah. Much bigger chunk of land. Mm -hmm. right. well, I would take it as a yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I will report back. I will entertain that. Okay. All right. Um, so I don't know if anyone has noticed our new website. It launched on Tuesday, June 1st. It is phenomenal. Uh, we are making some uh, uh, minor tweaks to it, as that's very common when you launch a new website. We've got nothing but fantastic compliments on that website. It is far more user friendly. It's far more responsive. There's a lot more you can do with it. If you not have a chance to mess around with it, um, please take a look at it. Um, like I said, we are making tweaks as it goes along. If you see anything on there that you want to add, feel free to email me uh, your suggestion. But it is a, it was a long time coming, but the citizens deserve that. I know council's seen it. They like it. It's mobile friendly. So it's definitely put us in today's age. So if you haven't visited, please do. And thank you to the key players in that. And that was Digital Graphics, Scott down here. We kept it local. And then also Derek Hutchinson, our new uh, planning director, took the lead on that. So. Um, thank you thank you for those two guys for doing a fantastic job. Um, also at the last meeting, council had, uh, by motion, wanted me to look at parking on Pike Street, a.k.a. Bell Manor. So Mr. Kiko did go out. So um, we did email council the stuff that he found. Uh, so it looks like we do have some um, areas that could be um, further painted yellow, uh, expanded or uh, added. Um, and this will alleviate because it looks like the first picture he sent, there is no yellow striking across from the driveway. Mm -hmm. So of course, if there's a car there on Pike Street, we've all seen it, it's a very narrow street. Someone's gonna have a really hard time backing out of their driveway if it's not striped. 
and that's what we, we've seen for this. So um, the information has been presented to council. Um, so if you guys would like us to, to kind of go forward and actually strike any of that, um, we would be seeking a motion to do that. Um, I had a couple of quick questions, actually, if you yeah. don't mind, and, and I'm glad, actually, that um, Deputy Garman and the Chief are here, because if you don't mind, I'd like to ask them something. Oh, please do. Um, yeah, and, I, and again, thank you to Mr. Kitka for bringing this up, and I've spoken to a couple of people on Python, and some people like the idea of partially striping as how he suggested, or full strike to eliminate heavy traffic. But the way it is set up now, how is it with emergency vehicles? Is it an issue? It's very tight. We can get we can get our medic in there, but if I had to sit a ladder truck up in there, it'll never happen. Oh, really? Okay. We can get in with the ladder. It's tight. It's tight. But then when you, if I had to sit that ladder up, we have outriggers that come out and come down. It would be tight. So if council decided to stripe that whole thing yellow, would that definitely be in your benefit? Yeah. My my, and I'm I'm looking to either way. I, I was just going to say maybe what council thought is just doing the first step doing the ones that Mr. Kitko has suggested in here, see how that goes, see how it plays with, with, with uh, your guys' crews, and then see how it goes with the neighbors, and then if it doesn't get the effect that we want to see and what the neighbors see, then we go for the whole shaman. Mm -hmm. the, the only thing we have yellowed off right now is, is in front of our fire department connection, which is to, if you're looking at the front of the building to the right of the, uh, the front doors, uh, we have had a, a few minutes since we've had one vehicle towed. Okay. But uh, let's count, let's count to, uh, I have a question. Sir? If I'm not mistaken, well, Pike Street is a narrow street anyway. Mm -hmm. But if I'm not mistaken, the section between Washington and Jefferson is even narrower than the rest of it. It's, yeah, I think it is. You're right. Or if we just ban parking between on Pike Street between Washington and Jefferson. Because like the chief said, if he has to get equipment in there, it's going to be a difficult. And we could lose a house. Yeah, I mean, you could that give it to be council's decision. He has one before with that. But that's yeah. a very good comment. Right A, that part of the right A lot's never used. Mm -hmm. There's plenty of options for parking. So, whatever the council would like to do, make a motion to do either way. I move we ban parking on Pike Street between Jefferson and Washington. Is that by means of signage or striping and signage? Both. Both. And not banning completely just on the side against basically we're we're bell banning up you can only park on one side of the street anyway oh that's right that's one direction you're right thank you so we're just talking between where the actual establishment is no no between washington and jefferson it's two-way i don't think it is i don't think yeah. so it is it all the way down to jackson that's what that's blocked behind yeah, Mr. it's two-way right there. You, that's how I get into the alley. That's how I cut back park. Mr. Bridge. When, yeah. when, when Main oh, Street's too backed up, I... So is that something that Mr. Kitko would have to look into to extend? What did, what did you say, Mr. Graham? I'm sorry, between what and what? Van parking on Pike Street between Washington and Jefferson. And he wrecked signage and paint the curb. Oh, so you're talking about going past Bell Manor all the way down to Pike Street Pier. Yeah. That's just as narrow. Yeah. Okay. I see what you're saying. Just wanted to visualize it. Mm -hmm. And like I said, there's there nobody you, the only people that use that part of the right aid lot are the Masons when they have their meetings. You do have an issue with it? Oh no. No, no that's you don't. fine. No, that's fine. You're good with it too? Yeah. It just doesn't really do anything <laughs> for Bell Manor. Okay. Your second for that. Yes. Sorry. Motion by Mr. Graham, second by Ms. Nicholson. Chief? What about as far as in front of Bell Manor then? That would be from Jackson to Jefferson, right? Is that what I heard? Yeah, that would be the initial spot that we were considering. Jackson starts. So he's, ex he's extending it. Well, yeah, from Jackson, it narrows down, right? I think so. So it's going to be from Make Jackson, it from Jackson, Jackson to Jefferson. Jackson to Jefferson. Jefferson. I'm sorry. Jackson to Jefferson? Yeah. And then, you know, if this ends up being a, an issue or it doesn't see, we can always tweak the results down the road. Jefferson. So we are going to Jefferson or are we just going to Washington? Jackson to Jefferson. Jackson to Jefferson. Okay. And we had a motion by Ms. Ayrston, correct? Motion by Mr. Um, right. Second by me. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
right. Any other discussion? When you're ready, please. Councilman Nowakowski? Yes. Councilman Cobb? Yes. Councilman Roadwald? Yes. Vice Mayor Cook? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. Councilman Eggleston? Yes. That motion is accepted 7-0. Thank you very much. Thank you, Council. And moving on with the city manager report, uh, fireworks are Saturday, July 3rd, 2021. We have a rain out date of July 5th, which is a few days after that one. Um, council had asked for a quarter job map, basically, where you cannot put a quarter job. So I included it in this uh, particular map as well. Uh, but Mr. <laughs> Kiko had went out and looked at that, um, just for information. Um, but now they, I mean, fireworks are gonna be coming up pretty, pretty quickly. To where we got with the fire. This is what I was talking about putting more down back here. I'm trying to get that map. This is a bit all over the Oh, you're good. Let well, me we just pass one I have out around. Sure. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Would you pass that down to Larry? Didn't we say two Porter Johns? I know Dan, Mr. Robot sorry. Mr. Robot had asked for a quarter John. Yeah, I'm just saying two Porter Johns. I know Dan, Mr. Robot, I'm sorry. Mr. Councilman Robot had said there's some at the field already, correct? Yeah, we have four at the baseball park now, out by the, the IGA parking lot. Okay. Um, and one of those was a piece ADA compliant? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. You don't you need one back here at Brubaker and Mill Road. Yeah, that's all my notes. Yeah. I think council that we're gonna use the four and then council wanted at least two additional. Mm -hmm. Now we needed a handicap list there and how yeah, yeah, we got that. I brought my notes one? from yeah. that meeting. I knew yeah, there's three regular and one handicap. Okay. <laughs> I didn't know you had a handicap on mm -hmm. Yep. Oh, yep. Oh, oh, oh. But this is where I was talking about back in here. Okay. Because they were walking over here in the grass. Yeah. The fence right there. Yep. Yeah. No, I wasn't talking about up there. No, yeah, there. that's that's where I thought you were talking. And like I said, I mean, as you can see, we're all, you all the edges. Did <laughs> <laughs> you get the Porta Johns through? Uh, Porta Clean. Well, well no, wait a minute. They're, your Porta Johns are through. Uh, Somebody else. Same one festival uses that thing. Yeah, mics or something. Yeah, mics or something. It's not through Porta Clean. Well, I'm going to go ahead and call them and at least get two, so we have those scheduled. And then ours, ours don't get picked up. Um, we we have them through the entire month of July. Okay, so if I get two, we can put one down where Mr. Cobble wants to. I put two down. Put two. Just right put, right 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 leave our four where they're at. Yeah, yeah, right there in the handy where Mr. Powell was speaking up. On Brubaker. Where I was talking about right here. Brubaker. Oh, where it comes out here in the middle? Yeah. Okay. Because people were going out in here using the bathroom out there. Are you talking about like right here? Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. You know, set them back off the of Should we do one at the one at the end and one at the beginning and split them up? Because people are, if they're walking back here, they're going to be leaving this area and walking down Mill Road before they yeah, get to it. Yeah, I'm right. So we'll do one right where, okay, I got it. So two of those, and that's from Big Mike's or Mike's? Yeah, I've got the name at the house. I'll, I'll find it and shoot it to you. I can't remember. Let me get my notes going here. Thank you. So Thank most you everybody's going to be working the Howard's lot, Big the IGA nice. lot, and the ballpark. Yeah, and then they'll sit across all along Main Street. I mean, they'll they'll sit in the advanced <laughs> auto parking lot, that little, uh, the old curves parking lot, and that greenery between it. And a lot of people will park and walk down to the ballpark. The ballpark will be closed, um, based off of Chief Trustee's recommendation to close off the actual parking lot down in the ballpark. We'll use that for the food vendors and and, and things, but don't allow any cars down there. Um, I'm. Guessing a lot of people will probably bring blankets and things, and because we'll be the, the baseball season will be officially done that week, so uh, there won't be any games. So they'll have plenty of open space if they want to play some kickball or whatever, and throw down some blankets, sit in the outfield, and watch fireworks. It's still further, you know, a big enough distance away for safety concerns. I do believe is what Ron said. Do well. The fields are out of the, the drop zone, right? Right. Yeah, the, so. only, the only place is this grass area right back yeah. right here. Yeah, right behind field one. Because that's within the range yeah. of their so, uh, shoot. Um, so, yeah, they're, they're, you know, I mean, uh, you know, the park will be busy. It's just no, no cars will be down there. 
but nobody will be able to sit in this grass area behind the ballpark or behind the IGA. No, that's in the drop zone. Okay. The only thing is, whoa, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. The drop zone ends where the uh, cornfield. Yeah, behind the IGA, right? Ends right here. Yeah, that's, and that's where what the drop zone can, ends. No one can sit back here. Why? Behind the IGA, right? Not here. Yeah, that's what he was talking about. But here, yes, they can sit all through the Yeah, they can sit all yeah. through here, yeah. yeah. But we don't want them to park down here. We don't want them, chief trustees don't want cars down in the parking lot itself of the ballpark. Um, backside, maybe, um, but the front side entrance to off of Main Street, I think you're just asking for trouble if you allow people to park down there. Um, Usually what we've done in the past, we blocked off Mill Road. That way, uh, we, especially when they're loading, they like not have any traffic down there whatsoever. Mm -hmm. So we blocked it from Brew Record all the way up to Main Street, so they couldn't cut back in through the uh, DMV. We blocked that off, and then what we done was, like I say, we run everything back up Brew Record, so we didn't have the traffic jam up on Main Street or okay. Nuclear Pike or Lake, and then yeah. we could go either. We put a deputy out town there, or, and I could send them either way. Yep, east or west. Okay. okay. All right. Then I, I didn't have his uh, contact info. I'll, I'll get it. I, you know, give okay. me. Yep, I'll send it to you. All right. All right. Back to you, Mr. Bridge. Awesome. Thank you. I have another um, question. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Is it, we're going to need quite a few people to pull this off, aren't we? More than just a, a couple of council people and a handful of deputies. Well, we. I can't remember, we'd have to go back through the notes to see how many deputies I, I got them all right here. We got four extra deputies, hours 7 to 11 p.m. There you go. Um, Chief traffic is Traffic exit, Mill to Brubaker, two Port Johns, trash cans set up at Howard. So, where do we get trash cans from? Uh, we've got them up for the garage. Okay, so just the ones we're in. Okay. And I have, there's 14 currently at the ballpark. 14? That we have, yeah. <coughs> we use. So I'll give you a call in this case if we can just pull those out. Would be no, oh, they'll be there still. Okay. Do you need trash bags for them? No, they're we don't we don't have trash bags. Um, Councilman Grab, are you, are you still wanting to DJ the event? Oh, we just not. You're good with that. You, okay. you want to get trash bags, Mr. Bridge, because it'd be easier to have the trash cans. Gotcha. We got plenty of trash bags. Okay, got you on that, Jack. That's easy. Okay. Uh, traffic barricade. We got two road close signs and. Um, number of barricades. How many barricades do we need? So we have two road closed signs. Let's say road is closed. And probably two barricades too. Do you remember how many went across Mill and Brubaker? Was it two each on each oh, end of four calls? Six of them across Brubaker. So we need a lot. We need probably 12 barricades. Yep. Okay. And those are just right next door in the hut. That's and you'll need some uh, caution yeah. tape. We got that. Something okay. to close off the ballpark because that's where Chief said he'll be sitting. Well, we'll put a barricade up okay. and, and run tape. All right. I got four barricades at the station. So the back we will probably get you down. Right. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Bridge, I did receive the. Oh, they'll be down at the today from the fire. Closest to the lake. You did receive it? So you should. Okay. okay. Um, the other note I have, yeah. Yeah. Mr. Roadwall from Kona Ice. Okay. Are we. So, so I was just Dan outside food vendors check with Kona Ice. Yeah, I, I can send him a, an email okay. see if he wants to. I mean, he's at the ballpark every Saturday. Gotcha. They're, they're at the ballpark every Saturday. Yeah. So we'll take care of most of this on the internal. I mean, and then we just show up the day of and kind of execute, mm -hmm. um, which we got to the 20. We have another meeting, so I think we can kind of rehash it all then. Okay. Um, but we'll start working on this on the back end. And we're okay with the Port of John, so we're just going to put one here at Mill and then one here at Brubaker, kind of split them up, and then use the four for them and then pull them over. Okay. And again, one of the one of your four is eighty-eight. Yes. Okay. Can we get the one pickup in the trailer again too? Do we have the we have the gator on that? Is that what we have? Hi. Huh? Did you have the gator? Do you guys use the gator on that? No, we use the one pickup. Uh, full size car and the trailer. That's not a problem. Because we and the trailer. Yeah, we put the trash cans up in the Howard's parking lot, and then take the barricade around. We may just let you use the new one. Do what? We may just let you use the brand new truck. It's got a new one. Oh, Aren't you just special? Oh, <laughs> 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 that air conditioner, too. 
<laughs> there you go. <laughs> That's the one without air conditioning. <laughs> We're not going to do that to you. Well, who are you going to take charge of it, Dale? Take charge of what? This firework. I'll help with it. You and uh, you and Bill, the ones with experience. I I'm, I'm not going to spend the time down there like I did the last time. And and I will learn from you guys. But yeah, I'll take charge of it. But I'm not going to stay there all the time. We're not going to let you know. You got to You got to I don't want no, I don't want no more rides with him. <laughs> <laughs> I won't let you stay there the whole time. You guys be talking about food vendors. You can have your food. Uh, uh, what about what about food? Tommy's food? double barrel barbecue yeah, will be there. Yeah. He's yeah. on Facebook. Yeah, yeah. Quite a bit. Okay. The only thing we'll have to but do. But other than that, I don't know of any other. Is Saturday by eleven o'clock to shut down everything on Burbaker and Mill Road because let's start loading fireworks. And they don't want any traffic running through there. Mm -hmm. Eleven in the morning. Huh? Eleven in the morning. Yeah, eleven in the morning. You'll be cussed at while you're setting up the barricade, I guarantee you. Won't be the first time. <laughs> All right. Food vendors. I've talked to Fuentes family, they're interested. Oh, that's good. Awesome. Um, and then we got Tommy's Double Barrel Barbecue, who is one that I know of, will be there. And then uh, I think you've got Corona Ice. Corona Ice, yep. It's coming. Corona Ice. Corona. 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 Kind of city of business. I know, but it's just got a lot more interesting. <laughs> Plug your ears. <laughs> they don't come on to 4 o'clock. <laughs> Can I ask Ms. Mullen a question? You still involved with parks? I'm trying. Have you been on, I know somebody talked about getting food trucks down there from the Parks and Rec Department a while back. Yes. You still plan on trying to do that too? Or? Yeah, yeah. Right now, um, Parks and Rec has not been able to do anything because, well, number one, we didn't meet throughout the COVID stuff. Um, and I've got to talk to Mr. Cook, but it is my understanding that we were down to two men on Parks and Rec. We do not have a forum. We can't do anything. Okay. I, I had a food vendor community possession. She called me. She said somebody reached out to her about sending out the ballpark for fireworks. And she tried calling me back the number and didn't work. Anybody, but she's definitely interested in life instead of for fireworks. I have to get a hold of Mr. Cook here. <laughs> <laughs> Did I get volunteer? Yeah. <laughs> You're, you're the, you're I don't the, have to face your wife. Falling cold. <sighs> Mr. Cobb, going forward, I do know that this is something that Parks and Rec, at least from my standpoint, would like to be involved in helping plan and set up and whatever's needed to try to facilitate fireworks. Love it. Love to have you there. We just have to get some more people. <laughs> What's your wife doing? But no, we'd like to have you there. What's your wife doing? So we've got some potentially three to four <laughs> food. I got enough trouble with her and her heart monitor. Would you, would you want to handle that on the food trucks? Trying to get some in here? For this year? Yeah. I wouldn't even know where to start. <laughs> okay. I'm sure Mike could give you a list. If you go, if you go online, date food trucks, it will give you a printout and phone numbers to contact. Okay. Mr. Here, Mr. Bridge. Let, let me say this real quick. We've got... Mr. Grimm, you said that uh, Christian and his family are interested, and yes. you've got Kona Ice, possibly, mm -hmm. and you said barbecue. I think three is actually pushing it for the amount of crowd. I mean, I know it'll be busy. I think one in Kona Ice would be enough, because if you get two or three, and you've had this happen at the ball drop, where you had a couple show up, and they're young. The crowd at the ball drop is great, but it's, it's such a short event, people aren't there to eat for it. And we don't want to take from our local businesses. Right. We don't so want to take... That's what I'm getting ready to say because I'm not over trying to set myself, but I thought the last meeting it was we were going to keep so it prepared. Yeah. I thought the final thing was the Fuentes 
like local and then mm -hmm. you want to take away from because a lot of people come in and they go arrow queen gets right slammed crazy busy people yeah. are going to come early to get a good seat I, they didn't show up too too early i mean I, do you remember them showing up very early no you can get them there early but you got to have something going, going on. on yeah we yeah. didn't start they didn't start getting a crowd about Eight, eight thirty, nine. Yeah, especially with no ball drop. It's like a ball drop. People show up a little bit before it's done. It's over. They they bounce out. Yeah. Well, then just stay with what we got then. Yeah, just stay with um, the barbecue and. Point us to get spicy and come uh -huh. nice to cool off. There you go. What about the barbecue place? That's what they were coming. Yeah. I would do the barbecue as well. There's not there's no barbecue in New Carlisle, so you're not going to take mm -hmm. away. Um, from another quote unquote barbecue joint. Mm -hmm. So you give them a little bit of variety without too much. Moving right along. Yeah, moving right along. So before the next meeting, we'll see what Christian, if he's a go. You got the barbecue guy, Dan, you're going Corona Ice, right? Yeah. Okay. On ice. And all that other stuff we'll take care of as in our house, the Porter Jones, deputies, trash, road clothes, barricades, all that. But, yep. So at that point in time, you just need people to show up there. Okay. Yeah. Moving on. Back to you, sir. Well, thank you. All right. So, uh, Clark County Community uh, Clark County Combined Health District. I don't know if you, anyone's seen this on Facebook. Uh, they're actually having a COVID vaccination clinic in this room on Wednesdays. That actually oh. ends on June 23rd. Thank it you. is from 5 to 7 p.m. and they are administering the Pfizer vaccination here. Uh, so there is a number that you do call. I do not have that number with me. It's on our Facebook page. You call and set up the appointment. That is a good event, free. Come and get vaccinated if you uh, are into that kind of thing. So the last thing was uh, on here just because of what was brought up at the last meeting. Um, journey through cultural sensitivity training as we, um, it's provided by the Valley Communications Council. Um, per the minutes like, from the last session, um, I was supposed to look into this, so information is, the, uh, is attached. It is on demand and free of charge. Um, so it is cultural sensitivity training. Um, I haven't looked into it too all that much. I might just take it just to see where I stand on it. Uh, but again, the only reasons why I told the manager report this week was because it was brought up at the last meeting about the requirement um, with the sign donation being made to the city. So council can do with that as they so choose wish. Um, that's all I got from the city manager report. I'm happy to entertain any questions. Nice ones. It was an excellent city manager report for your first one back. I like am never happy. Done. Yeah, um, there's not a billion things going on right now, and I don't have everything in front of me. So, yeah. I have a question. Yeah. Last meeting, I brought up the possibility of uh, community cleanup. Mm -hmm. uh, Sergeant Lehman said he would check with the sheriff for the avail availability of pride workers. Mm -hmm. I don't have that information yet. I will make sure he gets it to you. But um, I think when we do that with certain people, I think they are anticipating it just being reduced, released at the next meeting they're at. So I will have him do it a little further. You'll be what? I'll have him get me the information a little early and email it out to Okay. Thank you. Good, sir. I'm good. Thank for you. now. Mr. Scott. Mr. Bridge, can you do me a favor? Get with Christy. Okay. She can block out the date on the banner. Oh, for the fireworks. For the fireworks. And then it, would the city employees hang it? <laughs> yeah, we, we can handle that. So banner dates. That's right. So we just had it made that we can just put a new date on yeah, the Yeah, she'll, she'll put a new date on it for us. Okay. Nice. Anything nice else for Mr. Bridge and the city manager report? All right, moving on. Thank you again, Mr. Bridge. Thank you. And moving on, comments from members of the public. Anyone has any questions, comments, or all the above, please go to the community. I just have a couple questions, right? If you will, please. I'm sorry. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Anyone else? I need your name and address. I'm burning up. Okay. Janelle Zimmerman. 219 Prentice Drive. And I just had a couple of questions. I know I have no sense of time anymore, but it's probably been about a year and a half or longer ago. Uh, someone brought up about putting a net up over at the Carlisle Park for the basketball because there's no net. And I thought they were going to like do that soon, but it's been like over a year and there's still no net over there. The one, the one behind the uh, dollar store? Yeah. There, there's, a, there's a rim and a ring. Oh, okay. Maybe they don't need the net. I don't know. I thought you meant like a net to catch the ball from going to a fence. Or oh, no. no. That's just, like, I don't remember that. So an actual net that goes on the actual basketball hoop. Yeah. 
Uh, maybe they don't need that. I don't know. Maybe they can just uh, put it through. Uh, yeah. But, yeah. I mean, it didn't seem like that would be that hard to do, but it's been a long, long time. Well, the parks were closed for, over, for quite some time. Didn't yeah, they? well, it was way before that, uh, before COVID. Um, and another thing was, whatever happened about slowing down the speed limit on 571 there as you're coming into town, they were going to do something right away about that. I just haven't heard anything about it, have they? Yeah, from, from what I remember, the conversation with Mr. Kitko and ODOT, the, the, you know, they, it wasn't justified. Going off of crash data and, and ticket, uh, ticket data from the Sheriff's Department. Okay, I just had never heard anything further on. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, 571 is the state route, so why we we can propose it. Um, ultimately, it's down to ODOT in the state, and they they base it off of traffic, uh, residential streets, how far the houses are off the street, um, citations. Um, so we looked at doing the same thing for 235, just right outside of past the water dog, and, and we can't do. It okay, that. I just wondered whatever happened with that. Um, and another thing, I have seen around some places where they have signs up to watch for children playing. Is that something we can do in our city on streets? We have a lot of kids on our street uh, this year. Um, does the city put those up? Do personal no, people put them up? I mean, question for I mean, there's. I have one, but I, I purchased it myself from. Uh, actually, I got mine from Dick's. But but if we got one, we could put it up. Yeah. Mm, but the, it my, well, but I don't, I don't know. They seem really picky about being able to put up a sign. So it's my little front yard. The only thing I'm thinking is, if you really didn't have it up on a telephone pole or something high with all the cars parked there, nobody'd see it anyway. Well, we could put it on a telephone pole because we don't own the property. Uh, we'd have to go in the right of way somewhere. Um, I mean, we could get a few, but this is what my honest opinion. Signs and signs. I'm not going to slow anyone down. Um, we can put some up, but I mean, is there a particular area that you're thinking of? Is there a particular area where it's bad? Or, um, are we looking to do all the streets in the city? Oh, I was just thinking on Prentice because we just have so many kids. Although I will say most of them don't play in the street as bad as they did a couple years ago. But you know, I just worry we got a lot of little ones. You know, they run out between parked cars, and I just thought maybe it would help people think about it maybe it wouldn't either I don't know I just didn't know if we were allowed to do that or not mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I, I'm with you I mean unfortunately I think it's you know just like a speed sign they don't pay attention to those either well that's true <laughs> so, if you got it yourself you just you, red you, 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 you don't put it in the right of way because we can't have unless we put it in there we you mean we can't have just random signs in the right of way unless we put it in there so uh, the right of way is is that the part between the sidewalk and the you have the road and the side where you get the road strip of grass and then the sidewalk so it can't be on that strip of grass as long as it's removable you can you cannot put signs on the right away that's blatantly against city code well if it's clear back in the yard nobody's going to well, see and, it yeah anyway, and if you go behind your sidewalk and it's on your personal property <laughs> yeah. that's fine it just but who's going to see it when they're driving down the road and it's clear back there. yeah playing out front okay well i guess <laughs> They won't work, so I just I was just curious about that. I think that's all I can think of. Thank you. Mm -hmm. We can put road signs in there. I don't want to confuse anybody. Like if we put a speed limit sign there, we put a you know we could do that as a municipality. People cannot do that as a private resident. Okay, but you could put one up yes, there. Yes, we could. We could put yeah. There's a speed limit sign and stuff. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Mike. Chief, if Mr. Bridge, if you'd like, we can put a like a safety tip memo out through our fire department Facebook onto the new Carlisle Facebook. Hey, summer's here, kids sure. are out. Yeah, you know, please pay more more attention to the streets. That'd be great. Yeah. yeah, that'd be great. You know what would be great? Like a YouTube video of the two of you. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I love you. Do it. I love it. Goes viral. I see that. Ain't about time for another one of your. No. Videos. <laughs> If someone would request the sign on their street, would we be able to comply with that request? Um, I mean, sure. Okay. I mean, we got to have a budget for it. I mean, which I'm sure we can come up with. But the signs are ineffective. I'm not trying to be a negative, Nancy. It's just people don't. It, pay it's there for show, and, and that's what it's for. They don't pay attention to signs. I've almost been hit a number of times they across don't. the street yeah. at Main and Jefferson. Yeah. So I come out of the street. People call. running. It's low this year, so. Watch that budget, but yeah, something like that. One thing I forgot is MFL serving yeah. lunches now. Yeah. I was supposed to bring that up, so maybe you could put it on the website. 
Oh, they are. Yeah, yeah they started. Program. They started today. Yeah. Is that when it started today? Yeah. That's a yeah. great organization. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. But we came, but nobody else did. <laughs> so we just thought that could get out. Yeah, it's both here and at Rander Park and Park Lane. I mean, mm-hmm. I know it's they do they still do open air shelter over there. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And thank you for volunteering with that. Okay. I used to be on that board. It's a great, great organization. Yeah, it sure is. All right. All right. Anyone else? Any comments? All right. Thank you very much. And moving on to committee reports none tonight. Resolutions none. Ordinances four for introduction three action. Ms. Burner, if you could please. All right, we have ordinance 2021-13. This was introduced on May 17th. Public hearing in action tonight. In ordinance authorizing the city manager to enter into an agreement with the New Carlisle Public Library regarding a story walk program. So moved. Second. Motion by Ms. Nowakowski, second by Ms. Hagerston. I have a question here. Okay. Can be one second. Mr. Burridge, I'll get to you. And an explanation of this ordinance, um, this is to allow us to enter a contract with the library to do the story walk. Um, I don't know if anyone caught this at the last meeting. I actually had a bullet point on the city manager report, but I did mistakenly go over it. I meant to discuss it with the council last night. I think we catch it if you guys vote on it. Um, one thing that the library director did not put up is actually cost. So we would actually have to uh, spend around $2,000 for materials out of this. It's not a big deal to us. I already talked about it with Mr. Kitko, but I did want to let council know before you guys did take official action on the uh, legislation. Mr. Cotton. Who's going to be liable for the if the books get destroyed? Or? Uh, it's, built, it's all liable on that. On, that, on the library? Okay. So we won't be preparing, paying for the repairs. Is that what they're talking about? Mr. Cobb, anyone else? So what's the $2,000 for, Mr. Bridge? Is that so just manpower? Of the okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Councilman Cobb. Yes. Councilman Roadwald. Yes. Vice Mayor Cook. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Councilman Grimm. Yes. Councilman Eggleston. Yes. Councilman Okowski. Yes. Motion passed the 7-0. Moving on, we have Ordinance 2021-14. This was introduced on May 17th. Public hearing in action tonight. In ordinance authorizing the city manager to enter into a contract with Clark County, Ohio and the Sheriff of Clark County, Ohio for the incarceration, maintenance, and care of prisoners prosecuted <coughs> in the New Carlisle Mayor's Court. So moved. Second. Motion by Ms. Eggleston, second by Ms. Nowakowski. Thank you. And an explanation of this ordinance, this will allow us to, um, if needed, uh, jail prisoners with the um, Clark County Court, uh, which is the point of the legislation in front of us tonight. And Mr. Graham, I am still working on their board, just because it's popular. Mr. Cobb, we need to change that from mayor's court to magistrate. Um, you can't. In the state of Ohio, it's recognized as mayor's court according to uh, the Ohio Revised Code. Um, so we would have to keep the name mayor's court, but the legislation that's um, introduced tonight, uh, 21-2019, explicitly states that we will use a magistrate. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Cobb. Any other comments, questions? Good. good. That's awesome. Well, nice I don't catch. want him shot. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good he catch, is. though. He wouldn't look good in a black robe anyway. Uh, when you're ready to go, <coughs> um, Councilman Cobb. Yes. Councilman Roadwald? Yes. Vice Mayor Cook? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Councilman Grimm? No. Did you say I didn't? No. Okay. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Nowakowski? Yes. That motion passes 6 1. Moving on, we have Ordinance 2021 16, Introduction Tonight, Public Hearing and Action on June 21st, 2021, mm-hmm. and ordinance authorizing the city of New Carlisle, Ohio to lease property owned by the city. We have ordinance 2021-17, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on June 21st, 2021, and ordinance supplementing certain appropriations contained in New Carlisle City Ordinance 2021-01. Ordinance 2021-18E, Introduction Public Hearing 
in action tonight. An ordinance authorizing the city manager to enter into an agreement with the Board of Clark County Commissioners for the 2021 roadway resurfacing contract and declaring an emergency. And an explanation of this one, uh, since it is an emergency, we are able to introduce it, uh, vote on it tonight, and it be effective uh, immediately upon passage. Uh, but this is uh, allow me to enter to an agreement uh, with the county so we can do our roadway resurfacing and up for this year is cambridge court sunset drive deerfield and south scott from uh, madison to lake and it will continue our our trend of record repa record repair yes. of roads <coughs> yes sir all right councilman any questions comments on that are you ready please councilman roadwell yes Vice Mayor Cook? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. Councilman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Nowakowski? Yes. Councilman Cobb? Yes. Motion passes 7 0. And our last one, Ordinance 2021 19. Introduction tonight, public hearing and action on June 21st, 2021. An ordinance amending Chapter 280 of the Codified <coughs> Ordinances of the City of New Carlisle, Ohio, for the purpose of establishing a mayor's court. And like you said, Mr. Bridge, with 25 miles of road, I think we've, uh, we've done a good job in the past five to ten years. It's been fantastic. It has. I, mean, I, I know we don't, I don't think we get a recognition that we should. People are you know, still upset that we're not at a faster pace. And I mean, I'd like to go faster, but I mean, in comparison to where we were, you know. Six years ago? Yes. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, we've got ways to go, but we're getting there, and I think we're doing a good, we're at a good pace. So, and that's a big thanks to everyone up here, Randy and his, and his, his administration. So. And then other business, before we go through this quick list, um, under other business, I wanted uh, council, for those of council who haven't been introduced to Mr. Mike Garman, our uh, deputy in town, newer deputy, and some of the, our members in the audience, he's one of our newer deputies who's, uh, I'm excited to have him in town, he's done a great job, he's, I've seen him all over town, uh, you know, checking on parks and uh, you know, getting, you know, getting the job done. So uh, thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Thank you. Appreciate you're, it. If you're anything like your dad, you're going to be fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. All right. Other business that you would Ms. Brunner? Um, sure. We have our city fireworks show is Saturday, July 3rd, um, 2021. And our city offices will be closed on Monday, July 5th, 2021. Okay. No executive session tonight, and if wait, the council has, wait. I know, oh. if it, I was going to say, if anybody has anything else, so we'll, you want to go? No, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, I have found a USDA grant that's for cities to do composting, and the purpose is to encourage proper composting, <coughs> excuse me, proper pro composting of uh, food wastes. And uh, we've looked into some ways that could do it. The grant is a minimum of $45,000 and a maximum of $90,000. There is, there is stated that there is city contribution required, but I can't get to it until I can start to do the application. Um, I want to know if we're interested in doing this and uh, having compost equipment around town, and maybe in parks, maybe in whatever, and uh, then making that compost available to gardeners and uh, encouraging them to use that instead of fertilizers and the composting just has a lot of good benefits in terms of increasing soil porosity and uh, I'll just, I'll just go down the line if that's okay with you guys, Mr. Cobb. My only concern is here is we're inviting roads, possums, and stuff like that around. It's basically somebody knocks the compost over. The, 
the, the kind of thing that we're looking at is complete, that's a complete non-issue. It's a closed system. Well, anything can be open. I mean, I, I mean, I'm not against it. I, I would prefer to, to have a designated site for this before we, we, we um, get maybe a little bit more information. I mean, um, <clears throat> I mean, there can be a designated site. You know, uh, um, I just don't want a bunch of compost bins around the city um, that was would have just attract. I, I don't think uh, good behavior, so to speak. Um, now, if we wanted to put this over by the, the community garden where there's a concrete slab and we could secure these to the ground um, where uh, Mr. Cobb's concerns of, of tipping over um, and, and, and maybe somehow monitor them a little better than what we have with the, the pool and, and, and the dumping issues there, um, then, then I'm not against it. But um, so. I mean, we, could do, we could do one, say, at Westlake, and we could do one at New Carlisle, where New, New Carlisle Elementary is. You've got a hard surface there where you could put it down as well. Good then? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Mr. I will highly recommend that uh, you make inroads with the Clark County Health Department in regards to this. I think that once you talk to them, we might have some problems. I mean, from what I've talked with the county about, no. Well, I think, I'm, I think you're going to have to be cited to oh, yeah. open no, up a composting yeah. facility that's inside that's Clark County. There was no way to. And I think that citing process <coughs> is a very long and detailed process. <laughs> If my memory serves me correctly. Still. Thank you, sir. Um, yeah, well, I like the idea. I mean, I know a couple of my neighbors knew it. Um, yeah, you got to be there. There's not a current compost up at uh, Westlake. We're at Westlake, but yeah. There's, there's a small amount, but we, we don't have a lot of gardening up at Westlake yet. And that's that's, that's really what we call exactly. even though it's not exactly what you were referring no to. No doubt about it. Because from what I understand, you're talking more of a closed container right. system. Is I, I share Mr. Cobb's concerned as animals. I know when we go on our walks, we walk through that area, which is not closed container, but we've seen bed animals set up there because I'm assuming they're attracted to that complex. So that it makes me a little nervous, just as Mr. Herdwald said, of having them throughout the state. Well, um, if council's done, I don't want to. Let me go down. Yeah, down. absolutely. Just when you're done. Yeah. I'd like to hear more, but my main concerns are animals, health issues, and people dumping stuff that's not compostable. Yeah. Is all the time you need goodwill, salvation, or kind of stuff, a ton of money. You're moving trash to people that don't need it. So I'd like to see more. Um, I'd like to see more. I mean, I'd like to see them, if we were to do this, I would like to see this in the appearance. And, um, I'm concerned about people, like Dale said, about being hung up, hung stuck in the edge of it. Thank you, Ms. Agerson. Mr. Bridge. Um, so if council is willing to pass a motion to allow council to warn the to look into it, I would actually like to include it in that motion. We did talk about this a little bit today, and I'm still learning things as we go along with it. Um, and I would like to learn more about the container size and what we can do with it. But unfortunately, I have to work at Liberty as a council as a whole. So I would personally like to assist Councilwoman Eggleston with looking into this a little bit. No, no council, sorry. Uh, clearly no New York. Uh, but I would like to the council to work with her on that because, like I said, there's some, still more information that I want to learn, learn about this particular program um, and then the different sizes of the containers that they do have and the possibility and then, you know, if there's any matching plus required by the city and the best practices when it comes to this. But I think it actually could be something cool and unique to the city if it's done right. 
Aren't you busy enough? I'm, I am busy. <laughs> no, that's fine. That's what you wish. That's, what, that's my job. So, the council would <laughs> like to make a motion to allow Mr. Bridge to assist Mr. Nowakowski with the topic. I'd like to make a motion to table this till we get more information. That's what I'm asking that's for. I'm asking for your support, whether you want me to go ahead and investigate She this. wants to investigate it more, but he wants our direction, I guess, if you will, to, to work with her on that information. So moved. The only, the only way I would support it, you're going to have to guarantee it can't be tampered with. Okay, so we have well, she's just going to look into it. Yeah, just, just information. So, a motion by Mr. Graham, second by Ms. Tables. Councilman Nowakowski? Yes. Councilman Cobb? Yes. Councilman Rodewald? Yes. Vice Mayor Cook? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. Councilman Eagles? Yes. That motion's accepted 7-0. All right. Um, and then, um, I have some. Just a couple of things. Mr. Grimm has a couple of things. First of all, I move that we direct Mr. Bridge to check with the Ohio Historical Preservation Commission, see about uh, grants to move the log cabin. Second. Oh, I'm sorry, I can't do that because I just helped Linda with her brains. <laughs> used up your one motion. I used up one motion. I did. Oh, second? Yeah. Oh, okay. Motion by Mr. Graham, second by Ms. Eggleston to ask her to direct Mr. Bridge to look into mm -hmm. Grant just for moving the table. lock down. Yeah. Ohio historical, or some sort of historical. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I couldn't remember that. Let's look for a grant to do this over. Just find Let's something. Let's find something. That's free. Oh, free money. Free money. It's easy to find. The kids think it grows up. Right. Um, Eggleston was the second? Yes. Okay. Councilman Minokowski? Yes. Yeah. Councilman Cobb? No. Councilman Rodewald? Yes. Vice Mayor Cook? Yes. Mayor Lowry? We were really busy, but yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. Councilman Eggleston. Yes. That motion is accepted 6-1. And I have a question. We have ordinances regarding tall grass and weeds. What about overgrown bushes and shrubbery? Um, that would fall under, we have vegetation ones, yeah. Well, we can get them under height of vegetation, line of sight issues. I mean, there's multiple things we can go off, depending on the location of the bushes. Just walking down here in front of the AT&T switch, those bushes have grown out. All right on top of that, actually. Oh, my own business then. <laughs> Those were all being cleared out there soon. Okay. Anything else, sir? I'm done, thank you. Anyone else in their business? Uh, we had ordered new light poles. Did we get those? New light poles? The ones I... The decorative the ones I'll have to check with Howie. I don't know if you're talking about the, the two we wanted on stock. Yeah. I'll look. Okay, because that one on Main Street in front of CV does really need to be. Again, it traffic got absolutely. Traffic cones been there for like two years. That brings up another question. What, what, what we got, guys? The light pole in front of the La Condesa. Mm -hmm. It was recently replaced. Okay. It's different lighting than the rest of them. Yeah, Mr. Kiko explained to that at one of the last few meetings. They don't make those particular type of bulbs anymore. So we'll have a series of one that match and don't match until the day comes where we that's the one until we, we place yeah, them until we all have that's the one that shines in my bedroom and it's a lot brighter now oh, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. okay i got a couple of things we have a proclamation to present to tara harness on saturday uh, at a graduation party for her the young lady was the i guess the word is nominated as miss Clark County basketball. So we're going to present her with a proclamation at the event on Saturday the 12th. Any of council is welcome to attend. However, according to Mr. Bridge, we got to be careful because we can only have, did you say three? No, you're conducting business, you're entering a proclamation. So, yeah. So, yeah, so you're so if, if yeah. you'd like to attend, you know, that's fine. I have no problem, but 
you know, get a hold of Mike or myself and let us know that you're going to be there. And that way we'll have to jiggle who and she, goes. And she doesn't know about it either, so that should be an answer. Well, she is aware of it. Oh, yes. she? Yeah, I oh. had, had to oh. let her know. Oh, oh okay. I didn't know she was aware. She is aware of it, okay. and consequently at that point. Second factor. I have been apprised, and it was mentioned tonight, that we have vacancies on the Parks and Recreation Board. In talking with Mr. Bridge some time back, unless we have a signed resignation from members of these boards, they continue to be on the roll. Right now, that board is hamstrung because they don't have enough members to even hold a quorum. So I guess in order to excuse, I don't want to say that, to have a meeting to actually show an unexcused absence for these people, which three unexcused absence means you're off the board, you're then entitled to a public hearing. Is it council's wishes that these members be contacted in person or by phone and ask for a resignation to be submitted or a letter from the city be submitted to them? I think the easier route would be to see if they get some more resignation for them and save a lot of time, energy, and money. In my opinion. I have an email from one of them that says, I'm not going to continue on the board. I don't know if that's valid. I don't know if it needs to be more official than that. It's something I can forward to you guys. Um, sounds official. To sounds me. official to me. I mean, if you're not, yeah. I have a text message from the other. <laughs> <laughs> do we need that, Mr. Bridge, or do we need Jake to? I already looked at stuff. Yes. You're doing it now, or do you have it? No, I've, I've already had it look at things. With so, this. so you actually have two ways to get them off. You can use the Parks and Rec Board bylaws. Right, no, what I'm saying is, is their, the, the, the very short statement that they emailed and text to her sufficient? Yeah, send them over. But then you also have, uh, council has a, 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 a essential right to remove people from boards. Because these boards are an extension of you guys right. and, our, and our codified ordinances. And that's what I had to look at between, because I was worried about a conflict of interest between the parks and rec bylaws with the removal of a board member versus the um, actual codified ordinances that, that we have. And there was no conflict. Jake said we can utilize both sections. So I'm trying to find that section of the code that gives you guys the authority. Um, if I can't find it, I'll email it to you so you guys have it. And then um, I can work with Brandy of, of getting that stuff to her. Um, any a form of official removal, I'll have to draft a letter in there, have to sign off on it, or council on it, but I can't. But out of the three, you've got two kind of resignation letters or texts, correct? I've got, I've got an email from Kathy that says I am not going to continue on board. Okay. I have a text message from Tana that originally she wanted to continue on board, but I don't know if that's Legislation Chapter 276 is Boards and Commissions. Um, sorry, I'm trying to make the text page bigger. Um, Section 276.01 states, members of any board or commission appointed by city council shall be subject to removal from office for non-performance of duty, misconduct in office, or other cause determined sufficient by council. 
emphasis added. Um, 278.13, which is the Parks and Rec bylaws, only calls for removal for missing of non-consecutive meetings. So the attorney says, and I agree, and we all, we all agree, you have two different clauses. You have um, one for underperforming due to missing of the uh, meetings itself as dictated by their policy versus the chapter 276 general that says you guys can remove them for anything that's construed as, I lost my spot, perform for a non-performance of duty. Right there you go. So you don't need a letter, you don't need anything. Just make a motion, remove them, be done. But it's just the three, right? It's uh, the two ladies and then the gentleman from out of town, right? Right. What do you mean gentleman from out of town? There's a, the Greg, third. Greg I didn't know his name. Right? All I knew was that last year when we were, he only attended one meeting. Was he a citizen? Um, no, he was. Well. Was he a citizan when he was appointed? Yes. Okay. I was. Is he not a citizen now? I thought he was. Okay. I, I, I don't know. I don't it's been a while. I apologize. But anyway, he um, another city. That's what it was. That's yeah. right. He was on Parks and Rec or something in yeah. another city. That's right. Yeah. Oh. Thank you. So Good. all I know about awesome. that situation is, unfortunately, the only meeting that he attended was the worst one we ever had. Um, and that was a pretty first impression. <laughs> So technically, well, what I see it is it is two members, right? Yes. Two. Myself One, it's back and forth. Sure. So why don't, why don't we do this? You call a meeting. You can't have a meeting. You, you show up. There's no, you can't do it because you don't have enough people there. Go home. Come back. Tell us what happened. And we'll go from there on our end. I got a question. If I'm understanding what you just read. You guys can literally right now. We can literally yeah. right now. You can remove just them right now. Remove them now. But I'm saying if she, I, I don't want to, if she's waffling, I don't know the lady, but I also don't want to just remove her. If you want to give her that one last opportunity to call a meeting, she should. You know what? Her. Now that my, now you're speaking, it's probably best because you're putting forth the effort to do it. And if they don't show up, they didn't put forth the effort because they could come back and say now, right. well, we haven't met in COVID. You right. just removed me. So that's what I would do. So, then, yeah, then call a meeting. members and come back to the next council meeting, tell us, and we can. Uh, you're still, are you still chair? No, I was chair. Okay, so in the meantime. Um, and unfortunately. So the ones that have been in writing, go to which is, is Kathy's email. Yes. Do you have that email on you right now? Yes. Can you forward it to me? Yes. Good. Uh, unfortunately, the text message that I have from Tom, I can't access for eight more days because I ran over my phone with a lawnmower. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and you're telling us this in a public meeting. Does council want to act? On one today? Yes. You did. Yeah, I mean, if, if, if that person's already submitted a resignation. resignation. Mr. Cobb, go ahead. If, if the three, if we remove the three, that only leaves Mrs. Mall, right? No, we have um, Charlotte Christian was just appointed. Last meeting, the meeting before. Yeah. It was like two, one or two meetings ago. Yeah. I think it was two meetings ago. Um, I have been in touch with her via email. She's kind of just waiting to figure out what we have to do to get the meeting but set up again. How do they hold a meeting if they sit their bylaw so they got to have a quorum of three? Well, that's what I'm saying. You can't have a meeting. So she makes the, the good faith effort of let's let's have the meeting, put it out there, and if no one shows up, they can't have their meeting because there's only you know one or two of them. Then they just walk back away because they can't do any business. Better. Another thing you guys could do is actually reamend the Parks and Rec bylaws to make it a three-person board instead of a five-person board. Well, we might need more. Just, I'm just, I'm just kidding. I, I mean, ideally, for at least for the things that I wanted to accomplish when I decided that I wanted to be a part of this in the first place, the more the merrier. Um, but when I Kathy and Tom are kind of on the same page, and we don't 
for, you know, for students whether or not they want to join, but I will do so. Um, that's, that's what I would I mean, I'm trying to call a meeting, go from there, and then come back to the next council, well, or the next student's council meeting, you can do that. And then we'll, in my opinion, play council would, would you, remove them. Yeah. You, you have a pretty blatant resignation from the board on this email. I mean, it's pretty clear. Right, from one, but there's the one. <coughs> That's right. But I would suggest council move forward on this one I have in front of me now, because it says blatantly, welcome aboard, Charlotte. And this is from Kathy Wright. I am sorry, but I have dropped from the board and will be working elsewhere in the community. Right. I mean, it's, and I'm assuming, yeah, I would take that as, but I'm talking about what was the lady's name? Tom. Tom. Her. That's the one I would give her the opportunity. To oh, yeah, no, yeah. That, yeah, I would accept the other two. If her, Tom is the one I would give her that last chance. Oh, gotcha. So, that's so, my thought. Okay. If that's okay with you. That's fine. Count. Perfect. Is that a public meeting? Oh, yeah. Yes. yeah they got that's, that's the next part that I'm waiting on, trying to figure out who's involved and whatnot, because we have to have public notice and the opportunity to can, can we put that in motion to let her call the meeting? If they don't show up, then come back to council, like council decided. I don't think they need a motion to do it. They should just go on their own. They're just, I, call the I don't have your rules, but call the meeting, publicize it. Public, uh, publicize it. Thank you. Yes. Publicize it, and the legal means that your rules say to do so. And I think our, then, if I remember correctly, our um, meeting notices follow the same rules. Yeah, yeah, it's all the same. Okay. Yeah. So then when you show up, there's just two of you, then just walk back. Because obviously if there's just two, you can't do anything at all. Right. You can't discuss anything, nothing, just walk right back out and come back to council. Okay. And that was just for the three that's going to be remaining after the removal of the other two. Are you still removing the other two tonight? Or do we have to since they've already resigned? I don't think you need Well, to. we got one resigned, you got one who moved out of town. He hasn't officially resigned, has he, Mr. Nash? I know I was not privy to whatever communication he had with Tana. I just had a text from Tana that said, hey, I talked to Greg and he Okay, so let's do this. Maybe you guys do a motion to accept her resignation. And then she can deal with Tona and Mr. Nash after the if they don't show up for the Kathy's meeting. resignation. Yes. Okay. Do you have a motion to accept Kathy Motion to accept, accept Kathy resignation. So okay. <laughs> Mr. Cobb, second by Ms. Nowakowski. Councilman Cobb. Mr. Cobb. Councilman. Oh, yes. <laughs> I didn't hear you. Councilman Roadwald. Yes. Vice Mayor Cook. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Councilman Grimm. Yes. Councilman Nicholson. Yes. Councilman Nogowski. Yes. Motion passes 7 0. So it's just you and the new lady, right? Pending. Yes. Okay. So just, yeah, just let us know. Whichever you still next have week. Mr. Nash's contact information? I have no contact information. Uh, text me tomorrow. We'll get it. Mm. All right. So, so we at least have to send a notification. I've had me like a letter in the mail. Did we need to talk about that citizen? Um, the citizen of the year. Um, we probably should. You know, or I move we go ahead and acknowledge those three. How, what form do you want to do that? Do you just want to do it? Like, um, Doing a proclamation. Well, here's the thing. If we're going to do a citizen of the year award, then I think we, I mean, how do you want to lay it out? Is it we have to digital? establish some guidelines and is some it, is it proclamation? Is it and a plaque? Is it, sir? Why don't we piggy, and not to disrupt it because I think something should be done too, but why don't we just add that to Monday night's discussion because it's going to take more than five minutes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it really is the, the, the details and all that. Yeah, yeah. Monday afternoon. So we are the middle. We go out now and say we end the discussion. All right. Next motion to be motion. Hopefully, to sure. Turn. Right. Four. <laughs> second. <laughs> motion by Mr. Cobb, second by Mr. Graham. Who is this? Uh, motion by Mr. Cobb to adjourn, second by Mr. Graham. Councilman Eggleston. Yes. Councilman Nowakowski. Yes. Councilman Cobb. Yes. Councilman Roadwalk. Yes. Vice Mayor Cook. Yes. Mayor Lowry. No. <laughs> Councilman Graham. Yes. We're going home. You can stay here. Six to one. <laughs> Mr. Walton. I don't know.